Welcome to East U Masters Training Part 21. In this video, we're going to take a look at working with our idle control tuning in our EMU Black software. We're going to be looking at how the open and closed loop style idle control is going to be functioning, how to control a pulse width modulated style idle solenoid, as well as an idle stepper motor. And then we're also going to be taking a look at our ignition feedback at idle so we can command the proper amount of idle torque to hit our target idle, whether it's going to be an open or closed loop. We're gonna have a lot of things to cover, so let's jump into this video so we can check this all out. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna be taking a look at working with our idle control in our EMU Black software. Now, before we jump into the training tutorial, make sure you have your main tuning page layout open here so you can follow along with what I have on screen in the tutorial. You can find that under desktops, under open desktops template, and then down here under main tuning. So make sure you select that option here. I'll click cancel since that's what I have loaded on my screen. And I'm gonna move across from my setup here into my idle control page. Now within this page here, I have everything laid out to see all of our idle control tuning parameters. Now before we jump in here and actually talk about what we find on screen, let's talk about the concept of what we're trying to accomplish with our idle control. So we're gonna find when the engine is at idle, the amount that the engine is going to have for airflow coming into the engine is gonna be either dictated by how much the throttle plate is open or the idle control motor that's gonna be attached in trying to make the idle control work. So we're gonna actually have two different types of idle control motors. They're gonna be a pulse width modulated style or a stepper motor. In either situation or either style control motors, we're essentially gonna be using them to create a controlled vacuum leak in idle conditions. So by increasing the amount of uh, uh, opening of that idle control motor, it's going to be increasing the amount of airflow. So by increasing the airflow, we're gonna naturally have the engine start to idle higher as long as we have the proper fuel and spark timing delivered to the engine. Now, essentially what we're replicating there by increasing the airflow and increasing the fuel is going to be producing more engine torque at idle. So we really need to think of our idle control as idle torque. And if we wanna have our idle speed raised, we need to raise that idle torque. So we have another way we can take a look at working with the idle um, as far as idle control goes, and that can be our spark timing. Our spark timing can influence how much idle torque we're making. So if we're at 10 degrees ignition timing in our spark timing table at idle, and we raise our spark timing to five de another five degrees to 15 degrees, or we raise it another 10 degrees from 10 to 20 degrees total, we'll find that the engine RPM will increase if the airflow remains the same. And that's because we're producing more idle torque. So we can accomplish the goal of raising or lowering our idle speed either by going in and raising or lowering our idle spark timing um, or the amount of airflow we're allowing into the engine. So either are a valid way to get the idle results that we'd like. Now, when we're implementing the idle control, we need to keep both of these in mind so that the spark timing can influence our idle speed and influencing the idle torque and the airflow can do the exact same thing. So we have different methods to implement to produce essentially the same result and there's gonna be multiple different ways to attack the idle control. So we need to keep an open mind when we're trying to dial some things in. We'll find some engines will respond to allowing more airflow through the idle control motor into the engine rather than using spark timing. And some engines will definitely go in and run better with more spark timing or manipulating the spark timing rather than using the idle control solenoid to manipulate the airflow. Generally speaking, we'll have a more consistent, more repeatable idle control result if we're using more heavily influenced spark timing rather than airflow. So my personal preference when I'm working with this is always to bias going into my idle spark timing. Tank. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't wanna miss any of the videos we're gonna be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.